Now today I'll be showing how to test and replace an air fuel sensor on a Subaru. Now very quickly I will show two different techniques on how to test the sensor. If you want to skip all that, you're only here really just to see how to remove and install it. In the description box I'll list on how far you can fast forward so you don't have to waste your time. But that being said, let's jump over to the vehicle. I'll first remove it, test it on the bench, and then go through a couple things. Now fortunately, getting to the sensor is quite easy. It lives right underneath this plastic panel. So you have these plastic tabs that hold down this little dam that runs into the air filter. I'm first going to remove these two clips and show you exactly where the sensor lives. Now these two plastic clips, they're really the wrong one for this uh, plastic cover. Really, they should look like this. And you can simply, there's a tool you can purchase to remove these, but simple enough, you just insert a flathead screwdriver and pull it out. This is a little bit different. What I'm going to do is just lightly pull on it like that. There we go. And then this whole thing comes out. Now, of course, this is the very popular 2.5 liter four cylinder engine that you find on many, many Subarus. Again, this is an Outback, the Impreza, the Forester, etc. This is a 2011, by the way, 170 ish thousand miles. But if you take a look, right here you see two harness connector connectors to the left of the upper radiator hose. This is for the front sensor. This is the sensor we're dealing with today, so it's right here. Very easy to get to. And this is the rear sensor. So this is sensor one before the catalytic converter, that's sensor two. So we're dealing with this guy today. The rear will show in a couple days. So to remove this, there's actually a socket. This is known as an oxygen sensor removal socket. Now there are different sizes in terms of the drive. This is a half inch drive socket. What that means, now again, this being a half inch drive, I have a half inch extension. And then I couple this to my half inch ratchet, okay? If you pretty much have 3H drive, that's perfectly fine. They do make these for 3H drives, which is this, okay? So as you can see, this won't work. So the point is when you purchase this socket, you want to make sure you have, you purchase the right drive for the tools that you have. This is around $9. I'll include a link in the description box below. Sometimes you can even rent these from the uh, auto parts store. Now you can test the sensor while it's still attached to the exhaust. I'm going to remove it and test it on the bench. It's just a lot easier to film. But nonetheless, everything I'll show you, you can do uh, while everything is still connected here on the vehicle. So at the nine o'clock position, there's a little tab. You press in that tab and you pull. Maybe a little difficult here. There we go, pull on the body. And then you grab your socket and you place it right over the sensor, make sure it's on there, and then we'll uh, go ahead and remove it. Let me just bring you in as a close-up, okay? Now very often you can just place the ratchet onto the socket and remove it. In my case, I'm just going to use a small two-inch extension. Now before I remove this, you may also want to spray some PB Blaster right here on the threads and just let it soak for a little bit. I'm not going to do that. I tend to have pretty good luck removing these, but if that makes you feel more comfortable, go ahead, just make sure you remove any uh, any overspray from the exhaust. Pretty tight, there we go. Okay, super easy to remove. And then once it's loose enough, just thread it out and whoops there's your old sensor now testing the sensor is quite simple and again there are two ways you can do it the first way is using a digital multimeter many of you already own a meter and they're very inexpensive this is twenty dollars off amazon and i'll show you how you can test it within the next two minutes the flip side is and i'll show you this technique too is while the vehicle is running this is a scan tool that's able to read live data. And as the vehicle is running, you plug this in, or you have it plugged in before you start the car, really. And as the vehicle is running, you can see what's going on with this air fuel sensor. And I'll show you both techniques. Now, if you need anything, again, I'll have links in the description box below to our Amazon affiliate site, just to sort of make things simple. 
So let's start with this technique. Now, do not be intimidated by these. Very easy to use. You have a lot of different functions. In our case, we need the omega symbol. This is an ohms or a resistance test. So just place it to the omega symbol. And then every multimeter comes with two leads, a black lead and a red lead. So all that you're doing is just, just plugging, plugging in the leads. Super simple. Okay. This is just two wires with alligator ends or alligator clips on the ends of them. Not necessary, just makes the job easier. And then I just have a paper clip that's cut in half, essentially. Okay, so two little paper clips. Okay, here we go. So, harness connector. Now this is the tab, again, at the 9 o'clock position that we press down to remove it. Just rotate it. So it's now at the 12 o'clock, and then you have prongs one, two, three, four. Number one and two you're leaving alone. You're just dealing with the bottom two. But it's very, very tight in here. So this is where the paper clips come into play. So you're just plugging or pressing in the paper clip. And a good reading, typically two to four ohms. And if you don't know what I mean, just watch. So what I'm going to do leave that there you want a good connection without a good connection then uh, you'll have a false reading okay so i'm just placing one alligator clip there the other one will go on the other side and then just hook this up to the multimeter and then just watch okay so i'm just placing alligator clips to those paper clips and then connecting them or placing them to the multimeter and watch the gauge with the reading and we have 4.2 to 5, there we go, 5 ohms. So we have 5 ohms worth of resistance. That's perfectly fine. It's not uh, a bad sensor. A bad sensor would be if you're not seeing anything or the reading is incredibly high. Then the sensor is bad. Now in my case, I do have a new sensor. As you can see, now if you do need a sensor, I like Denso personally. Uh, they just make very high quality parts. You can find cheaper ones. The so Walker is one for example and uh, Rock Auto has very good prices on auto parts, and they're not paying me to say that, but they do have good prices. The reason why I have new sensors really for the front and the rear is because this vehicle needs a catalytic converter, and it's always a good idea to replace the oxygen sensors when you put a new converter. So I just decided to do this video very quickly just in case you're getting a trouble code. Okay, so this, it's that simple. So what I'm going to do is reinstall the sensor. Now before we reinstall the sensor, you want to use anti-C. So if you take a look at the new air fuel sensor right here, this anti-C is included. So make sure you have the anti-C compound. So I'm just going to place just a little bit on here. It really doesn't matter again in my case because that converter needs to be replaced. But just to show you, don't need a lot. And when you put this on, you don't want to touch the element, okay? You want to make sure it just goes on the threads. Then you take your sensor, place it back in the exhaust. Again, be careful with the element. You don't want to bang it up. And we'll just... Now, you don't have to over-tighten these. Just make it nice and snug. There we go. And then, of course, you just plug in your sensor. And that's it. Let me show you the other technique with the scan tool. So again, while the vehicle is running, take a look at the scan tool. You have a number of different options. In our case, we want data stream. And what I want to do is find this specific air fuel sensor. So I'm going to select items. This is worth every dime if you plan on doing your own auto repair. It's worth every penny. Again, maybe 50 bucks, you can get a pretty good scan tool that's able to uh, provide live data. And what I want to find, again, in this is, is this specific sensor. So right here, we have an oxygen sensor. B1 is bank one, sensor two. This is the other sensor I showed earlier that's after the catalytic converter. That's a different sensor, ignore that. We need bank one, sensor one. Right here, oxygen sensor voltage bank one sensor one, B1S1, that's the one that you want. And we have roughly 2.2 volts, that's a good reading. For the most part, if you have a bad oxygen or air fuel sensor, the, the voltage, the output voltage is under 0.5 volts or above 4.5, for the most part. Now, there are a number of different uh, 
trouble codes for this sensor, maybe five or six different ones. So what I'll do in the description box below, I'll list every single trouble code and the corresponding uh, issue with that trouble code. So some is low voltage, some is high voltage. But that being said, this is just something you could do very, very quickly, super fast. There's other things you could do with this, but this is just the quickest thing. Uh, this is the first thing I would check for an air fuel sensor, let's put it that way. So very simple to do. So I hope this gives you a really good idea on what it takes to test it, replace it, and uh, you know keep your car on the road. So thank you for watching. We will continue with Subaru videos. I'll include it to the playlist, and we'll see you soon.